<laughs> yes, we are live. I think we're live. Yes, we're live. The counter is red and it's ticking away. Hello, 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 everybody. Mark Deal and I are here to talk with Focusrite. This is Dan Hewley, who's in the middle Hi. of moving. <laughs> My apologies for the backdrop. Who isn't in the middle of moving this year? It's ridiculous. Everybody's moving. We are. Yeah. <laughs> I'm going to stay put uh, just until we can get through all this mess because, man, I, I was about to cut my cable and I'm like, nope, not even going to mess with it because I need the internet to be sturdy for at least another week. Welcome, Dan. We're glad that you're here. Thanks for having me. I appreciate it. Today, I want to talk with you about the new Vocaster 1 or, as Mark has, the Vocaster 2. Vocaster and that's specifically two. about the hardware, but specifically... As someone who would provide services of recording in remote locations, we take our gear, we set up at a conference, we take our gear, set up at somebody's place, or maybe they come to a home studio or even a studio that we've created. I want to talk about microphone interfaces mm -hmm. and what are some best practices and even more importantly, what do you do when things go wrong? So Great. what does, okay, so Focusrite is strictly interfaces that connect gear with computers yes correct yeah so really really it gets your voice into the computer is the is the best way to explain that um <clears throat> you know you you plug your microphone in uh and that changes your audio uh your analog audio signal into ones and zeros that your computer can then recognize and it can also be gear i mean as far as yeah we're talking about guitars and oh, kind of yeah. other electronic equipment would you sure keyboards okay. guitars samplers all kinds of like dj gear um, if you're, if you're Mark deal, you'll put in a DBX, uh, mic pre or channel strip beforehand, which counts as outboard gear. Yeah. All, all kinds of different things. Okay. Yeah. Although I'm not rocking the DBX for this, I just hooked up my new vocaster, uh, like 30 minutes before this live stream, probably not the best practice I would recommend anyone do, <laughs> no. but honestly no. I installed it. I did the updates. I got it running and a couple of quick tweaks and, uh, and I was off to the races and I already, I already love this thing. Yeah. We were talking about musicians. I've got a neighbor that's a drummer. And I keep uh, touting my nice new Focusrite interfaces. I, I showed him my Scarlett 2i2. It was like, oh, I need the 18i Kabillion or whatever it is. <laughs> yeah. And you probably know because musicians want to, you know, get sound from, from everywhere. Oh, yeah. And, yeah. And now I'm shifting over to the Vocaster. Yeah. If, if he wants, uh, he, you know, he can get up to 10 mic pre's with the 18i20. That's a great one. Yeah, wow. I guess miking every drum, but that's a drummer thing. And we're not drummers, we're podcasters. And that's probably right. why the person that's watching this is wondering, you know, Steve, Mark, and the, what we're doing with the Podcast Services Mastermind Workshop. We've got one of our sponsors here, Focusrite. And mm -hmm. on this live stream, as well as the replay, obviously, if you're not watching live, it is a replay. We're talking about interfaces and why they're important. Yeah. Yeah. So Dan, let's yes. talk about this little piece of, and Mark, if you want to bring in your Vocaster 2 into the picture, sure. the idea, because I, I know this. DR was asking, she, she says she won one and has no idea what to do with it. To people who have a DJ background like me or other backgrounds who have used gear before, it, it's like, well, how would you not know? But then when you think about people who had no idea what this gear is, we simply plug in an ATR 2100 through a USB connection to our computer. What do we need an interface for? Well, the interface is to plug in those more expensive microphones. Like right now, I've got my PR40, which I'm loving, hooked up to my Vocaster 1, which is then coming through to my computer via USB, and now coming through the internets to everybody who's watching this right now. Nice. And and Mark has the Vocaster 2. Now, what's the difference here? Why do we need a Vocaster 1 and a Vocaster 2? Uh, great, great question. Um, different. The main differences are, you know, in the numbers. So you have one mic input, one headphone output, or two mic inputs and two headphone outputs. Um, the only other addition, the only bonus that the Vocaster 2 uh, person gets is the addition of Bluetooth. Um, and that's really great. Uh, to connect your phone, if you want to bring sounds into your podcast, if you want to bring phone phone calls into your podcast, or if you want to take your computer audio out to your phone apps. Um, it's not really something we designed Vocaster for, but if you want to go on TikTok and record your computer audio onto TikTok through your audio interface, that's really a great oh, wow. way to do it with the Bluetooth connection or the, uh, the camera, or I'm sorry, the phone connection, uh, which is a cable there. And that's the phone connection. If you're looking as, as the camera is being shown, it's actually the bottom, but it's the top right in our camera view. That's the one right there. Yeah. Although it's a the T mark point. Yeah. 
Yeah. It's a TRRS cable for that one. So it's um it's it's a little bit different than the camera connection. The camera is one way communication. Uh, the phone is two way communication. Uh, but we can talk about all of that at some point. So when you say one way, you're so for the for the camera, you're actually saying when you're taking like a DSLR camera, like a Canon or a Nikon or mm -hmm. or whatever, you can output the audio from this to a recording device because a lot of people are live streaming. So this is a great way to get decent audio or good audio, actually better mm -hmm. audio. Uh, I, I keep thinking about the hallways of an expo like podcast movement. People are yeah. out there uh, plugging in a couple of microphones into a phone isn't as easy as plugging two into this and then outputting that to a phone. Mm -hmm. You're saying if it goes to a camera, it's one way. If it goes to a phone, it's it's two ways back and forth. Yeah. So you want unless you're, you're talking to my parents. Right, yeah, like and same. That phone same call with, is always one way. Okay. We have the Sorry, same. Sorry, Steve. Yeah. Okay. We we probably. Wait, uh, Dan, a brother from the same mother, I guess. Yeah. <laughs> Sorry, Steve, for the obvious dad joke there. <laughs> yeah. Uh, exactly. So when you have a phone call, it is it is two way. So you want to you want to hear your 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 person on the other end, and they want to hear you. So it it doesn't matter if you're going to a phone call or if you're going to an app or if you're recording on your phone. It does it all achieves the same thing. So any of the computer audio, uh, the show mix that you'll see in the Vocaster Hub, it all goes out to your um, through that that connection to the phone or to the camera as well. Okay, you mentioned Vocaster Hub, which is not a piece of gear; it's a piece of software. Mm -hmm. I know. Am I allowed to talk about software? Uh, I mean, I... <laughs> yeah, yeah, you a can, little more than, can. likely than uh, than hardware for sure. <laughs> okay. Now, our um, last live stream was all about yeah. software. So, <laughs> well, uh, so it's just the companion app that comes with Vocaster. So all of the features of Vocaster, it's like Vocaster Two. We figured out we have fourteen inputs. If you add up all of the stereo pairs and all of that stuff, so how are you going to mix that? You you have to mix that somehow. Uh, you can do it a couple ways. Uh, the Vocaster Hub software is one way to do it. So at the bottom, you'll see a, like a mix window similar to most DAWs uh, with sliders. So you can adjust the levels. And at the far right of that, you'll see the show mix, which is really like all of the other channels mixed up and printed out on that one. Uh, and in your DAW, you can record all of those channels separately, individually, or you can record just the show mix if you're happy with the mix that you've created in the Hub software. Uh, a couple other things that the Hub software does is it, it, it kind of mimics the controls that are on the Vocaster itself. So you have your mute button, which is great. We have the best sounding mute button in the business. So I can just <laughs> go ahead and hit this button. Is he uh, pulling a Mark Deal joke right here? I was pulling a Mark Deal joke. I was talking about the weather really briefly. I was, <laughs> um, But right now, uh, I also have... At the moment, you'll see the enhance button also, which is that cool little magic wand. So, you know, imagine like on your iPhone, you have a magic wand that enhances your pictures. This enhances your voice. I'm using it right now. I have, uh, you have four selections. You have clean, warm, bright, and radio. And I just really like the radio. It makes me feel like, you know, I'm on the radio. Uh, so that's the one I like to use. Uh, other than that, the only other thing that you can do is and I really like this feature, <clears throat> is you'll notice on the host side, it controls both the host headphones and the monitor out and the monitors, so your speakers. Right now, I'm doing something that I'm completely against, and it's one of my tips, is I'm using speakers right now while I'm, oh. I'm having this live stream with you. Uh, I could always adjust that, but um, if I wanted to mute those, there's a little speaker icon in the top right. You can just hit that, and it'll mute your speakers, so then you, you're good to go on your headphones. Top right of the Vocaster two or of the software. Uh, the, the, it'll it'll shut it off on either interface. Vocas Vocaster one or two. There's a little icon for the speakers, and it'll just kind of shut those off. It'll mute the speakers okay. while you have that button pushed. All right, because we're talking about the software, and I want to I, see I am, if yeah. you could bring that up. Can you bring that up and share your screen with us? You know, I tried. Uh, and I was about to, and I think I may have lost connection when I was going to do the same thing. Uh, Can I do it? Dan, yeah, if you'd like, we go ahead and bring yours in. That way, I can uh, share it to my screen. Studio. And then, Steve, I'll let you bring that in. In fact, let me take this Vocaster out of here. Yeah. Vocaster. Because most of the time, when we're talking about this stuff, we don't need a uh, a piece of software there to we manage go. a recording. We're really look, relying on the gear in a remote setup to take all the interface or all the pieces, bring the stream together into a river, and the river goes out as you know recording. But you're saying here, will this record on a computer with each track separate absolutely it will yeah that's oh, what man. that's what i was saying so if you look down in the bottom section here the mix 
Uh, you can see my voice right here um, on the host side. I'm on, I'm plugged into the host. And um, all of the other channels that go across, the loopback channel, that's any sounds that are coming in from you guys. Oh, so, really? so if I wanted to, in my DAW, I could route that loopback channel to a, to its own track in, in the recording software in the DAW. And we could ha have you guys on your own track. So like if... If we were having a conversation, we could mix that and put it out as a podcast. And you can see everything is being added up over there on the right. That's the show mix. So that's a combination of absolutely everything else that goes across here. Um, of course, the host and the guest, those are mono signals because it's a microphone. But the auxiliary and the Bluetooth and both loopback channels, those are stereo channels. So, you know, you you, you have a whole uh, plethora of, of different options that you can record uh, and a lot of versatility with this interface as well i i'm really loving it so we could set up a a mix minus type thing without any additional oh hardware or no the mix minus is done we did it yeah, for you you don't even done. have to think about that's it that's wonderful you yeah, you yeah. know you're you're on the loopback channel there you're not seeing my voice come back there and that's because the mix minus is already introduced are you able to hear yourself through the headphones yes you are okay yes. hmm I've got to I've got to make some changes over here then because uh -oh. <laughs> I love it. Yeah. Um, <laughs> One thing I want to point out, Dan, you were talking about bringing in all these channels into your, your DAW. Uh, it, Steve, that's for folks that aren't using Audacity, uh, <laughs> like what you were showing before during the Audacity or the uh, the DAW duel, Hindenburg versus uh, versus Audacity. Now with Hindenburg, you can. In fact, uh, Dan, you guys have a partnership with uh, Hindenburg, right? We do. Uh, and actually, uh, you get Hindenburg Lite, a lifetime subscription to Hindenburg Lite. And you also get uh, Hindenburg Pro for six months, I believe. So, yeah, you get to try out all the bell bells and whistles of their top tier plan. And, um, you know, if you don't need all of that, great. You still have Hindenburg Lite, so you'll continue on uh, being able to record and edit. Mm -hmm. All right, nice. let's go back to the talk about setups. Sure. Because I've, I've got my Vocaster 2, I can plug in two microphones, mm -hmm. I could bring in somebody over the you know phone line or whatever if we needed to. Sure. Uh, you were saying something about recording like 14 channels. Sure. If you count all those up, uh, you have your host and your guest, that's one each. Your auxiliary and your Bluetooth, those are two each since they're stereo. Mm -hmm. um, so, you know, so that's uh, one. So it's really only one, one additional person. One additional person. But, you know, if, you, if you're talking about channel count... Um, <laughs> If you want to, if you want to go that way, it's one, two, three, four, five sources. So you have five sources that all go into your show mix. Okay, but I couldn't have right now. I don't have three microphones in that location. That's when I would go to a Vocaster. Is it a four i four? Uh, that's a Scarlet. Uh, you would go oh, to a, Scar a Scarlet eighteen i eight at that point. That's our four micro microphone option that we have. That's when we go back to Scarlet. 18 yep. i8 okay all right because yeah. the, the numbers throw me it's not 18 i know it's 18 channels with eight people eight. uh <laughs> it's 18 inputs and eight outputs uh there but there's only four mic pre's is the is the tricky thing that you have to sort out in there oh uh, and that's the thing the difference between vocaster and scarlet is scarlet was always designed with the musician in mind uh you know focus rights a music company we go back to 1985 with rupert neve and um george martin from the beatles you know, the Beatles producer, uh, you know, so we, we've been a music company at our roots, but we know that there's a ton of podcasters that are using our gear as well, which is why Vocaster was designed. You know, Scarlet, it's a great tool for musicians, but Vocaster is a fantastic tool for podcasters or any other voice actors, um, um, you know, voiceover people, audiobook readers uh, and streamers, any type of any type of spoken word content creators. Okay. We've got uh, four people in the room. Uh, Hi. We're using a. No, I'm saying <laughs> this is the scenario. <laughs> Excuse me. Oh, oh. <laughs> yeah. Let me take out. I'm taking out the uh, software. Cool. No problem. Uh, so I've got four I'll people in the room, that. and we're using. Let's say we're using the Scarlet because Scarlet's been around for a while. The 18i8, mm -hmm. uh, and we've got four microphones hooked up to that. Yes. Yes. Yeah. Okay. And what are some of the things that a a, a remote studio engineer would want to know about using one of these interfaces if something goes wrong I and mean, what we're, we're talking about room environment we're talking about uh sure if the power goes out in the middle what do you do <laughs> give me, the, give power, me all the worst case scenarios the power goes out in the middle you're just gonna have to pause that interview unfortunately uh and that's and that's with any audio interface unless it's battery powered uh you're yeah you're, you're gonna have to 
pause well, that on would be that the one. scenario then get some kind of a battery backup if you're yeah, really battery. serious about it well I i'm have running it. my vocaster off my laptop which has mm -hmm. got a battery uh, yeah there you go power yeah if you USB if it, uh but steve's question was 18 i8 with four people in the room no, so i was answering with that question yeah. Th that one does require um uh, an outside power source vocaster does not though so great point mark that vocaster I have it plugged into my computer as well. It, is, it doesn't even have an option to plug it into the wall. You know, you, you'll notice on the back, there isn't even a hole back there to plug it into the wall. And that being said, if you have a, a camera situation with Vocaster, you can plug that USB into one of those really cool like charging bricks, you know, like, you know, you charge your phone with, and that'll power your Vocaster. And then you can just use the line out into your camera and you don't need a computer to record. Or That's if great. you, or if you have any other like, you know, recording device that doesn't, uh, require a computer you can go to a line input on that and and you don't need your computer to record okay that's very cool very cool yeah so that would be a so i'm thinking about if i've i've done gigs before where i've been in the middle of a field literally in the middle of a park yeah and we have power running to broadcast the whole thing but then if i wanted to actually Record, I, I remember at FinCon 2016, we were in San Diego and they had a setup to record podcasts on a on a table which was located at the outskirts of the property, which had no electricity. And oh. we were running everything off a of battery there. Wow. And that was really cool to be able to do something like that because who knows, you're in the middle of, of this beautiful scenery, which there's no outlets, you know, in the trees. Mm -hmm. So... <laughs> I like the idea of that, although the, you know, the use cases are limited, I think. I think I think in that situation, you have to go with a different product from a different manufacturer that I probably shouldn't talk about in this live stream. But no, th th that being said, there are different tools for different situations. And uh, a situation came up with me just like that. And I had to buy a Zoom um, P, was it H6, which has the four mic inputs, uh, has one headphone output. How disappointing is that? That, that was yeah. the one. I, I'll be honest with you. I already returned it. I, I bought it and I thought I was going to use it for a job. That job didn't come through. So I returned it because that was the only thing I bought it for. Uh, but, you know, sometimes I, I don't want to say this, but Focusrite doesn't always have the tool for, for every job at the moment. You know, that we have a great roadmap ahead of us that you should you should definitely watch things that are coming from us um but please don't listen to me don't buy a zoom buy a, buy a scarlet or a, or a vocaster <laughs> well i will say for somebody that is in the midst of redoing my studio for the first time and well every two three years i end up ripping everything out and putting it back together i like how everything is channeled out of the back of this except for my headphones and yep. and just the the feel i don't want to mess with the knob while i'm talking in fact you can see a little mm -hmm. bit of a line a live uh, indication of the the volume. I could turn it up to see if I would start clipping. I don't want to do that yeah. <laughs> on here right now, but <clears throat> I think as far as something that would sit on most people's desks and be there as a companion while they record or while they listen or while they create content or maybe even mm -hmm. while they consume content, yeah. honestly, this is a piece of equipment uh, I'd rather have. Vice. Although I did like my Scarlett 2i2. It's, it's back in the box, but everything came out the front, so it was... It kind of contributed to the rat's nest. I won't. Uh, I won't pan out to. But I, I've really yeah. been enjoying this form factor. I I've got to say the same thing. Um, and I'm not saying this because I work for Focus, right? Like I'm I'm an audio engineer. I love, you know, the expensive interfaces and mic breeze. Uh, I know I I poked fun at your DBX a little earlier, but mm. I've done the same thing. A uh, little bit before I got my hands on a Vocaster itself, I went and bought one of our Claret Plus interfaces, the Claret Plus Two Pre, and I also bought the um uh the isa1 mic pre which is our focus rights heritage mic pre that goes back to the 80s um which is you know it's probably about a thousand dollar or thirteen hundred dollar signal chain that i have there and that that was on my desk so just massive footprint mm -hmm. uh you know and it and in None of it is conducive to just reaching over and grabbing a knob without looking, you know, making eye contact with the camera, which I can do with Vocaster very, very easily. Mm -hmm. So when Vocaster came along, I got engineering samples, which I still have my engineering sample, which comes before pre-production, which comes before mass production, which are the ones that people actually buy. So I have one that's, you know, a couple steps away from what's currently being sold on the market. And I absolutely fell in love with the form factor. And even before I started creating Box City here behind me, I had already boxed up my ISA and my Claret just because I had to clean, I cleaned my desk. You know, you, you dust your desk and you're like, man, there's a lot of dust on this thing. And I haven't used it since last time I cleaned. 
So I decided, you know, it's time to go ahead and put it back in the box. Um, but you know, we're gonna have to have a shootout, you and me, Mark. I'm gonna challenge you with with the uh we'll do and, and we don't we can do this offline, but I would love to talk the, about the uh, ISA and the DBX. Well, now that I have the the Vocaster 2 and using the the various enhancements, preset enhancements, mm -hmm. and then dialing mm -hmm. stuff in on the DBX, see which one I like. And as most people know, if I can make a quick segue here, most people know I usually live stream off of this uh this microphone. It's a it's a condenser shotgun microphone. Oh, the uh, the cable's gone, and I'm borrowing my son's. Let me take the Vocaster two out of here so sure. I can. Uh, there we go. <laughs> uh, I'm actually borrowing my son's ATR twenty one hundred. Uh, I'm sure a lot of people are familiar with this microphone because it's what people have been touting in the podcasting space for about like five years now. Oh yeah. Uh, to some credit, uh, I'll say there there's reasons why I gave it to my son uh, a few years ago, but we won't talk about that. But what I would like to talk about is. Uh, because this is a USB and XLR microphone, I've actually hooked it up both ways. So I believe right now you're listening to me through the focus rate. Uh, now I've turned off enhancements. I'm not doing any enhancements. So I could probably do radio or sports announcer or the three <laughs> other. Uh, in fact, yeah. I'll open it. Uh, what is it? It's um, it's clean, warm, bright, and radio. I, I looked at, I just opened up my hub. It was so easy. I, I didn't need to take anything out. So what I'm going to try to do, I'm going to keep talking. If my video snaps, that's because uh, the platform you're using a stream may take a second while it shifts over to a different audio source. I'm going to go into audio right now. I'm talking through my focus, right now. I'm going to switch to USB and we'll see how that sounds. Hey everyone. I'm now talking on a mm. ATR 2100 like as if I did not have a, a clean audio interface. How, how do I sound? I mean, I agree it's a live stream, it's not high fidelity, but how do I sound everybody? <laughs> I heard an audible difference. How about, how about, how about you, Steve? Uh Oh, did we mute? Did you mute Steve when you did that? What happened? I did. Oh, not. sorry. That was me. That was me. I was <laughs> muted and I was, I was making all these great comments. You missed them all. Man, <sighs> they're out there. It gone. would not be a live stream if we did not have Steve Stewart talking with his microphone muted. I, yeah. <laughs> I'm guilty of that. Like eight out of 10 meetings per day, I mu keep muted. If only this new interface didn't have a bright red mute thing <laughs> shining right and, at you. And, and it, and it, and it turns your, your, uh, your meter red as well and flashes at you. And yeah, it, yeah, I do that oh. so many times per day. Oh, that's cool. I, I was afraid to do that, but since Steve <laughs> already did the flub, I did that. Wow. That is very well, obvious. Try it out on the, muted, uh, Steve. Uh, Try it out, Mark, on the uh, on the guest channel. You can do that, and you can see what happens, and that won't mess with you. I, I just did. Although oh, okay. right now well, I'm going through the OTR or ATR. Oh, I want to I want to go back right. to to actual good audio here. Going back, this right. There we go. Now oh, back there is a noticeable there. difference. Yeah. There it is. There yeah, yeah. Sometimes it takes some, you know, left and right. And yeah. the great thing about having okay it's not the best quality microphone but one connected both ways you can actually tell the difference between the what tiny little interface uh, somebody built many years ago using the smallest components possible to yeah. something like this with great preamps and you guys can power like a serious microphone with this thing right yeah that's and that's something really important is getting a proper gain level into your into your DAW um, uh, for, for whatever microphone. So a lot of podcasts, you always hear the combination of SM7B and Cloudlifter. That's something that almost always goes hand in hand. Um, and if someone buys an SM7B and they buy a Scarlet, they think one or the other is broken because they just can't get it loud enough. Uh, just because that that SM7B, which I, I recently learned is, is a microphone from the 1950s. Did you guys know that it has that much... Mm -hmm history wow. i know we're not supposed to talk about microphones um <laughs> but uh it, it, mark opened the door uh it uh it, it really wants a lot of gain and so you have to get a cloud lifter or a fet head or one of those cool dynamites or uh even the soyuz launcher is a good one that i've i've used but you need a gain booster so one of the things that when we were designing this, I, I insisted on 70 dB of gain or more than 65 was my was my line that I drew with the company uh, and with the, the product team. And, and they delivered. Um, it's it's a great sounding mic pre uh, and auto gain is a cool thing. Mark, I, I don't know if you set it up using auto gain or, or you, Steve. Uh, I'd love I, to hear your experience. I, I did because, like I said, I installed this thing about 30 minutes before the live stream, put the software on. I didn't even really have a chance to set the gain level myself. And I saw the, the great auto gain button. And then I, I did a couple of grand 
again, this was with a different or a microphone I'm not used to. So I was changing mm -hmm. my microphone position and technique and doing the, the audio auto gain um, uh, function there, which which helped me get it set up pretty quickly in time for uh, for this live stream. Yeah. Uh, I uh, I just hit my 48 volt button and I think I'm a little bit louder now, aren't I? Shouldn't no. be. No. OK. No, that shouldn't make it. No, with a, I'm hitting the red now. Oh, with a, with a <laughs> dynamic mic, you shouldn't, it shouldn't do anything with the, uh, the 48 volt and you don't, you don't need it with the 48 volt only with condenser mics or if you have a gain booster on there or are you, you I, I just was wondering why when yeah. I hit that all of a sudden now, whenever I speak, it's hitting the red, huh. it wasn't, it was hitting maybe yellow. Yeah. Huh. I wonder this, why. Uh, my main microphone, uh, shotgun, hyperbolic, whatever you want to call it, is a condenser, and it and it, it requires forty eight volts. Uh, it's I know Steve doesn't like to spend a lot of time talking about microphones, and we're definitely going to explore this in our next live stream in a couple days when we talk with our uh, our other sponsor and supporter for the podcast services, Master Ooh, Shop. Uh, something Hyle. happened. That was me. Can oh. you hear me on my hell now? Yeah, it's it's Ooh. very buzzy. But that's very oh. buzzy. It's probably oh. I'm holding it with my hand. Yeah, so I'll, I'll take <laughs> this out. Game. Yeah, all right. There it goes. But what, what, while Steve is fi figuring out his microphone live on the live stream, as we uh, like to do, uh, many people are probably familiar with the uh, Samsung Q2U or the ATR 2100, 2100X. It's got USB and XLR. And David? Although... <laughs> David. David's in the chat. Look at that. Sorry, didn't mean to interrupt uh, you. Oh, no worries. No worries. Uh, one of the things I'll point out about these, is, and this has happened to this microphone, is... The, the USB port will actually go bad. I took this microphone apart and saw that the little USB port had yeah. uh, popped off at solder points. Mm -hmm. It happens. And it, uh, Steve was telling me earlier today, it's happened to one of his microphones. Mm -hmm. And that's why you don't see people on stage with a USB cable uh, yeah. singing into a microphone. They use a good quality microphone. And uh, the XLR jack is, is very, very strong, very sturdy. And with these three analog points i don't need to worry about that and then i let the actual processing happen on something like the uh, vocaster too but yeah uh, you know i'm, I'm not going to um talk down on usb mics because i if you're a podcaster that you're you have an idea and you want to get started a usb mic is a great way to get started and when i say that Focusrite doesn't make usb mics uh, i own a samson q2u uh the atr 2100 i find them to be very 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 similar um i have one I have one of each, actually. Mm -hmm. uh, I find them to be quite similar. Um, yeah, yeah. <laughs> uh, a couple of minor differences, but but Very yeah, small, that yeah. that's the thing. If you think all of the components of of something like a vocaster are squeezed into the handle of that microphone and microphone components as well, so you're trying to fit all of these tiny components, and that just leaves a lot of room for things to break, um, for things to have crosstalk or interference, electrical interference. Um, and honestly, they're just very inexpensive, which is great, which is great. If you're going to get started, spend under a hundred bucks, start podcasting, get your podcast, get your message out there. That's what I want. I want everybody to get their story told. Now, when you're getting past seven, 10 episodes and you're, you're going to be a podcaster, you're going to, you're in it for the long haul. That's when you upgrade that mic by buying something like a vocaster or a scarlet and you plug in your, your XLR cable and you're just going to hear that improvement because at this point. Uh, in podcasting, how many podcasts are we at now? Two and a half million, something like that. Um, you know, argue about, about how many are active in the last 30 days, six months, whatever. But we're at a point in podcasting where audi high quality audio is just expected. There's no more no more room for, for, for bad sounding audio. People are going to tune you out. Um, people are going to... Uh, just listen to something else. I've, I've stopped listening to podcasts just because of the audio quality, even if I like the content. So, you know, and, and a lot of people do that, you know, so you have to, you have to commit to your audience and you have to invest in your, in your quality of audio. Agreed. There's no excuse for bad audio now, unless it's some kind of a remote situation where yes. you only get like one chance to get the president on the right. phone for 20 minutes. Mm -hmm. Yeah. <laughs> Capture that baby. Yeah. Uh, let's go back again to remote setups and, and, and putting together some kind of little, uh, a, 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 when you're putting mics together in the same room, there's going to be mic bleed. There's mm -hmm. almost no way to avoid it. So no. best practices when you're setting up a Vocaster 2, uh -huh. So you get yeah. two microphones. Yeah. Best practice for the positioning of the mics for the person and from hitting each other, you know, the, the mic bleed. 
uh, the best way is completely face to face. So 180 degrees from each other. So you want the back of them. Yeah, exactly. Just like that. And, and even you can see, I don't know if you can see with my mic, but you want the mics capsules to be very parallel to each other. So, so mine's a little twisted right now. If someone else was on the other side, I would probably adjust it. So it's right there in front of my mouth and I practice good mic technique, uh, because it's really important. And don't practice it for what it looks like on the video. Practice it for what it sounds like, because you're not you're not doing video. You're trying to get a great sound for audio. Some people like to have the mic way up out of the shot over here so they can so they can be seen, but that's not really how it was designed to work. Now I was getting some plosives as you spoke. They weren't horrible. Uh, so when you're saying good mic technique, and you yeah. can see me, mine's pointing towards the tip of my nose. If it was a if it was a shotgun, I'd I'd probably just graze the tip of my nose. That way, I'm speaking past the mic, but I'm also speaking into it, yeah, kind of locally. So, what do you do for good mic technique? I think you're having great mic technique for a for a streaming or for like a Zoom call or something like that. But if we were recording this for let's say if if this was a podcast interview, you want to be. Um, I always tell people uh, try to be a fist away from your microphone. So take make a fist and touch your microphone and touch your mouth. That's about where you want to be. And you want to stay there. You want to be directly off of that mic. Because if you move over a little bit, you can hear my sound shift a little um, because of, you know, the the cancellation. And you move over a little bit this way and it's a, it's the same thing. So it has that, that cancellation or that rejection. Um, yeah, I love that. I'm accused of being an audiophile, which that kind of stings a little bit. Whoever you are, Facebook user, I'm going to, I'm going to find you out there. <laughs> <laughs> I also uh, no, can't listen kidding. to bad audio shows. But yeah, nice. Yeah. There's no, no I, no, I, I agree. I, I can be a bit of an audio snob from time to time and I'll listen to your show. I promise. Sorry, uh, I hope myself so I can get to the, get to the chat and see if that was David or Dave or it's Dave, Dave Canyon. Oh, I don't know him, but I, I do know David, and I, I owe yeah. David a call. If you've been to a podcast movement, you know Dave Canyon. I don't. You How do I not? I don't right. remember the name of the show, but he, he he drives a truck, a trailer, tractor trailer, and uh, what's the name? Oh, Dumb with Dave. Dumb with Dave. Um, You know, one other thing is phasing that you might run into with microphones. When you have two microphones live in a room, phasing is something that can be an issue as well. Less so with, with podcasts because you can use different tools for that. Um, but, uh, but yeah, if, if you have two people, just have them straight across from each other. That's the best way. Don't, don't be sitting next to each other. You know, it, don't, don't, you have to do it for like how it was designed to be done and not how you're most comfortable. Okay. Now I'm thinking about a situation where we're sitting at a table because we're at an mm -hmm. expo and we're in the mm -hmm. hallway and this has been done. I've seen people do it. Oh yeah. They're in the hallway. That's where they've been positioned or it's at their booth. You can't you can't be directly across from each other. You have to sit on this side of the table because there are also people walking by and, you know, taking pictures or whatever. So best positioning for the mics there side by side at each other. <laughs> I, I still think, I, I still think the same thing. Someone's got to have their back to the, to the crowd or the audience. So uh, yeah, you just want to be across the table from each other. And then if you have four people, same thing um, you, you want like, think of a four-way intersection you want to have the same type of situation uh you know two people across from each other and then 90 degrees from each other okay 90 degrees from each other is the best you can do as and, oblique an angle as yeah. possible he's saying right. 180 would be perfect but you mm -hmm. don't need to be 10 degrees apart but if you are all yeah. behind like a rectangular podcasting booth where you're overlooking a crowd maybe if you're further apart and you're more oblique to each other but still facing the crowd yeah. 120, 120, like a triangle or something like that. Maybe yeah, and, exactly. And you want your microphones to be as close to 180 from each other as possible. Um, of, co of course, that doesn't always work. If you sit, I've, I've done this before and I, I might, let me think back. It wasn't one of you guys. Um, I did a bunch of interviews at one of the NAB shows where we were sitting on a couch and I had guests on a couch with me. So, you know, sometimes you just have to bend and break the rules and hope you can fix it in post. Uh, or give it to your editor. Let it let it be your editor's <laughs> problem. Uh, no, don't do that. Always try for the best input that you can get because, at the end of the day, make your make your editor's job easier. Yeah. You know you, that. Let, let don't make them fix it in post. Fix it before you record. Be ready so the, to record. The further apart you can get with still while still hearing each other, and the opposite you can point your mics 
you're saying in every scenario, the farther you get, the better. Because if I'm yeah. if I'm doing video, mm -hmm. I'm, I'm I've got two mics plugged into my Vocaster two. I'm outputting it to my camera. My camera's recording everything for a live stream from the expo hall or whatever. That's my best scenario. Is I've got me and my guest, and we're trying to keep them opposite while also facing the camera. That's that's the best thing we can do. Is what you're saying? Yeah, yeah, that's it. Okay. Um, fix it in free. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh great um yeah you know some of the some of the really important things are setting your gain level too and knowing the in, the difference mm. between input and output um mm -hmm. so that's the difference between amplitude and volume uh you know i, I don't want to I, I now now i feel this whole audiophile label that i've been given um i'm an audio engineer how's that uh in, input and output is different so on the vocaster your speakers or your headphones are your output. So that's that's the volume that you're hearing. Um, the gain is the amplitude that you're putting into the unit itself. So gain is on the input, volume is on the output. And you need to know the difference because you want your, your gain to be as high as possible without clipping. So setting that gain level is really important because you wanna do that before you adjust your headphone level. And what I like to do is turn my headphones down pretty low actually before I start testing my mic and things like that. Set my gain level and then look to make sure that it's metering where I think it's metering um, to make sure I'm getting a hot enough signal without clipping. And then I turn up my, my headphones to a comfortable level. Um, so, you know, at first, when you you sit down in front of a microphone and put on headphones and you don't hear yourself too well, don't turn up the volume of your headphones. You have to make sure your gain is set first. And that's that's something I see a lot of times with with a lot of people. Oh, I see it all the time. And I've been a victim of that, too. Oh, it sounds like it's everybody's great. I can hear it really well. And then the recording's really low because yeah. we had the volume of the headphones turned and the vocaster's got a separate yeah. output for the mic and output for the headphones so yep. if it sounds great in the headphones what does it sound like to the recording the recording's exactly up differently and you look at your waveforms and it looks like it's almost just a flat line you know you want big <laughs> big chunky thick waveforms is what you want chunky thick waveforms that's right. the name of this episode i think i would say if this is going to be an episode we title it that <laughs> big chunky thick that's waveforms. It. that's it right there that, that sounds like a, a great name for my suburban dad band Yep. I think we need a, a t-shirt that says th that chunky thick waveforms. I, I think, I think David's comment to fix it in pre that's a t-shirt. Uh, <laughs> I, I think that's a t-shirt that could be, <laughs> yep, yep. uh, yeah. And, and you know what, for editors, that's probably should be your mantra. You know, Dave also had another comment, David, I should say, had another comment. Yeah. He was talking about my t-shirt, which we'll talk about in a bit, but he said the uh, he saw Bob Heil do saw, talked about hearing something and listening. As more people hear and get used to good audio, less people would be okay with poor quality audio. Mm -hmm. Look yeah. at the difference in just going back to radio, from radio beginning, AM, and then we went with FM, and then we have satellite radio, stereo, and all that stuff. So the advancements of audio over the years, and it's getting faster and faster, and now we've got digital audio everywhere mm -hmm. on our phones and everything. Then, yeah, our, our standards are higher, but it's also easier to obtain. Mm-hmm. Mm. It is. Yeah. I mean, even with, you know, Apple's going to immersive sounds and you can get that through your AirPods. You know, that's that's yeah. a huge thing. And immersive audio is incredible. And I know our friends at Dolby are 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 getting into the podcast world with immersive audio. Uh, they're going to have some stuff going on at Podcast Movement, yeah. which is going to be really cool. Dolby Atmos. Yeah, they'll be doing yeah. a, a I forget when it is. But anyway, uh, I think speaking it's of podcast just the, movement. I think it's just before podcast movement, so it, it might actually be on the twenty second or twenty third. What, what they're doing? It's on oh, the twenty third. Yeah, it's okay. on the twenty third, which we can't talk about because something better is going on the twenty third in a, our room. Steve, what else I, is I was, going on the twenty third that Dave's helping us with? <laughs> well, thanks to our sponsors like Focusrite, oh. we have the Podcast Editors Conference, which is a one day mastermind. We're actually going to sit at tables, four people at each table, working through how to create our business models. Sounds boring. So necessary. Everybody I talk to says, you know, I really need to focus on my business. I really need to do business yep. better. Okay, so where are you going to go for, to, to get this training from people who know about your business? It's going to be at the Podcast Editors Conference. It's going to be August 23rd in Dallas, Texas. Same hotel as Podcast Movement. Same day that they're having their evening kickoff party. So we have from 9 till 5, plus some breaks in the middle, of course. We're going to dig into it. We're going to be masterminding our way through this together. And by the time you're done, you're going to be able to walk out and be able to know who your target audience is, what your value proposition is, 
Uh, you're going to know how to find partners to partner with. You're going to, it's all kinds of great things that you'll be able to find at podcasteditorsconference.com while you're in Dallas with us. And then, of course, if you got a ticket for Podcast Movement, you can also, you know, start practicing your, your networking skills with us because we're always doing that. Yeah, you two are are like chatting with everybody. Every time I see you, you're with somebody else. And uh, yeah, I remember leaving the last event at PodFest and, and uh, seeing you at a table with a, a whole bunch of people. Mm-hmm. Oh look at what a great what a great crowd of sponsors there. You got you got three of my favorite brands in podcasting. I love it. Yeah, if we start <laughs> from the right and go to the left, which is usually the opposite. You got Squadcast, which is where you can broadcast and record. Uh, not not broadcast, you can record, capture your uh, your virtual recordings. You got Heil Sound, which has got the gear, the headphones, the microphones for recording that. And we'll be talking with stuff. that in a couple of days. Yep. Uh, oh, I'm sorry. Focus right, which we have the interface, which then connects the microphones from Heil to your computer in Hindenburg, which is, which is right where yeah. you can go to post produce your show. I mean, it's I didn't even know that. Mark, you must have done something to make it work that well, because I didn't even think about that until just now. You've got oh, everything. The flow. Well, it's funny, Steve, because it's all about strategic partnerships, which is something that we are going to be covering in the Podcast Services Mastermind Workshop brought to you by Podcast Editors Conference and Podcast Editor Academy. So it's amazing when you structure things to build off one another. <laughs> one plus one can equal three. And in this case, one plus one plus one plus one can equal you know, 5,000. I love it. <laughs> so Dan, um, thank you and focus right for sponsoring that. Of course. No, thank you. And, uh, I don't know if, if you want to come by, uh, Mark is actually going to be leading a panel on the 24th with us. So when you're here for the podcast editor Academy mastermind, I didn't say that right. And I apologize. Uh, come for the event on the 23rd, stay for podcast movement. I think that's how it goes. Uh, there it is the podcast services mastermind workshop. Yeah. Um, Come for that. But on Thursday, uh, this is just announced. I haven't even told Podcast Movement this yet, but Mark Deal is going to be moderating a panel with myself from Focusrite, uh, Rockfelder from Squadcast, uh, Stacy from Acast, and who am I forgetting? I'm sorry, Jonathan from Hindenburg. So it's all of the partners that Vocaster has uh, are going to be on stage. And what we're going to do is give tips and tricks. We're not going to, it's not going to be a brand pitch. It's going to be a little tips and tricks. Um, you know, how to choose the best interface, how to choose the best recording software, uh, how to choose the best, uh, whatever, whatever re- remote recording software, et cetera. So we're not going to be up there, you know, touting our brands. Of course, we're going to introduce ourselves, but yeah, Mark's going to keep, keep us in order there. And then, uh, Michelle and I from Heil Sound, who you, I'm, I'm guessing you're talking to, uh, her and I have a panel on Thursday to go more in depth with, uh, podcasts or with, with audio interfaces and microphones. Thursday, August 25th, that podcast movement. Correct. Cool. Because actually this Thursday, I'm talking to Michelle at Heil headquarters. Are you really? I'm which jealous. Is, which is why I'm wearing my Heil Sound t-shirt right now, because it'd be I'm just jealous. kind of meta if I wore it there. But yeah, it's, <laughs> and she lives maybe 40, lives the, the headquarters is just across the river from me. Mm. And I've been there before. I got a picture of myself in front of a wall of PR40s, the champagne color ones. So cool. I love it. I love this mic. It's, I, I have a few different mics and I'm, I'm using the PR 40 right now as well. I, I rotate between a few, but yeah, this is, this is probably my favorite. Yeah. Yeah. Very nice. Uh, and I, I plugged in my health in earlier. That's why you heard the buzz. I was switching mics in the middle of a live stream. Don't do that. <laughs> Don't do that. Yep. Man. Oh man. So Mark's back. He must've booted himself out. It must be a dad thing. <laughs> it's always a dad thing, but um, yeah. So, so we've got uh, the live stream with Heil this Thursday. You got the Podcast Services Mastermind Workshop, August 23rd. That's a Tuesday in Dallas from 9 to 5. You got Podcast Movement starting after that. You've got the session that Mark is leading a panel, which has Focusrite and Heil and all the people. Unbelievable. There's a lot going on, and I just can't wait. I think it's going to be a great conference in Dallas this year. Yeah, I'm really looking forward to it. And, I'm and you know, spoiler with all these boxes, I get to fly out of a different airport for the first time ever. I'm excited <laughs> about that. Can we ask which airport? Does that give away your secret location? Oh, I, in my secret layer. Uh, <laughs> uh, yeah, I, I can. Um, I can tell you, I'm moving to Montana, so I'll be flying out of the Billings Airport. Oh man, I I, I used to fly in there to go to a certain place for vacation every once in a while. Interesting. So, we'll have to the talk cliffs about are really cool. You fly in and you're seeing cliffs, but then the airport's on the t- very cool. Yeah, yeah, I very can't cool. wait. Yeah. 
speaking of also been there and been very cool, I've been to this uh, where podcast movement is being held at the Sheraton, Sheraton Dallas. Yeah. I've been there. FinCon oh, cool. 17 was held there. And that was where I had the Volkswagen Beetle, the podcast bug shipped in. And we did live podcast recordings from the the the, the trunk, which is the front of the <laughs> Volkswagen Beetle. Yeah. And it's Mike Wilkerson's car. He has it set up so it could be a recording studio. And he has a mixer in there and he had he had four Heil microphones hooked up to it. So it was very cool. Nice. Yeah. That's that's a lot of fun. It was. It was a blast. Real pain getting the car there and, and getting it in there and having the fire marshal approve it, but man. Oh, the smell inside driving one of those cars with a carburetor inside. <laughs> Ooh. Yeah, that smelled. I I'm old I'm old enough to remember that. Lots of fun. Lots of fun. So, David, hey, you got to come back on Thursday night because that's when we're doing the live stream. It's going to be 7 p.m. on Thursday, this Thursday, live from Heil headquarters. It's going to be really cool. Nice. Uh, and David also says the PR40 About has better hours. rear rejection than most cardioids. I did not know that. It does. It's pretty good. Like, can you hear that? The snaps? Yeah. A little bit, a little bit. But then again, yeah. I got the, the big headphones yeah. on. Headphones. Hmm. But rear rejection, very important. Yeah, it is. Cool. All right. Well, let's see. Uh, folks, if you have any questions or anything, I didn't see any questions, Mark, and I know you were watching the chat probably a little better than I was. I was. I was. And if anyone's watching this, uh, this is going to be up for, for a while. Thank you for Focus Right for sponsoring the podcast Services Mastermind Workshop. Usually these videos where we uh, discover and explore insight for new hardware, new software, is really only up in the Facebook group or on YouTube for about a week, seven days, and then they disappear. Poof into the academy and we've got over 200 plus lessons modules courses everything uh, everything we've ever done in the academy this is going to be a little bit different thanks to dan thanks to focus right for helping us support and sponsor the podcast services mastermind workshop we're going to leave this up for a while so if anyone has any questions about the interface if they would like to see me do a more in-depth side-by-side video on what this microphone sounds like either through direct usb record into a doll direct focus right record into a doll maybe I'll, I'll, I'll check some of the enhancements compared to the DBX 286S, which mm -hmm. I love, <laughs> but it's it's a really bulky, old, ugly piece of gear. If I can oh get no no that. no no no, I I love that I love that stuff. Do you? Oh, I right. do. Audio engineer in me loves that stuff. The rack mount ears that you just you know. True. I, I love I love that stuff. True, true, true. I uh, I'm looking at it over there, and it's a little <laughs> rack mount. It's the only thing in my rack mount because who has rack mount equipment anymore? I don't. Maybe you do. I don't. Uh, um, I have I, a power I have a power conditioner, and that's all I have. That's rack uh, mount at these oh. days. <clears throat> That's right. Oh, we have a question. We have a question. Dan, Dan, this is for you. <laughs> oh, geez. I, <laughs> that's a great question. Um, I don't know. You, you guys go first. I need I need a second to think about that. Well, mine is the cream filled chocolate covered cream filled. I love the cream filled, even though I know it's fake sugar. I, I love it. Love it. Love it. Uh oh, mine's on the floor. Is Whoops. donut? <laughs> oh, I, his favorite donuts on the floor. Oh, that's so sad. I, <laughs> I really like the, what is it? The buttermilk bars. Um, you know, it's kind of like an old fashioned donut, but it's like a big bar. It kind of cracks on the top. I, re I really like those. Oh, I think I know what you're talking about. Yes, 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 yeah. yes. Yes. Mark, favorite donut. Go. He's, he's going through his midlife crisis. It oh, might be one of my, those you do uh, with the car. My favorite donut, honestly, is any donut that I don't have to go get myself. Because uh, <laughs> usually I'm the donut delivery guy of the house because I guess I'm the sugar pusher of, of my household. That's but a dad job. Him, it is a dad job, total dad job. But if anyone ever has a donut for me, that is now my favorite donut. <laughs> I absolutely have no problems driving to Krispy Kreme when the light is on. Hey, they just uh, built a Krispy Kreme here in South Pasadena where, where I currently live. Uh, they took out would they take out a KFC and put in a Krispy Kreme? There you go. I haven't gone yet, though. There you go. They're both finger looking good. <laughs> you ever have a glazed after it's been taken Well the... done. Well done. <laughs> so nice. I, I think that's a, a different company. You got to get your uh, got to get your company tagline straight. Yeah. Finger was... looking good. That's something else. That was KFC, know. wasn't it? It was KFC. Yeah. Yeah. But the Krispy Kremes, man, they get all over and they're just so good. They're so that's good. That's true. Yeah. That's yeah, true. So... All right, so David, you just derailed us. Thank you so much. <laughs> Excellent. Focus Dan, right. I look forward. Oh, focus right. Yes, you got uh, on Mark's left hand, you got the Scarlet, which is the red one. And then on the right one, you've got the Vocaster 2. I've got the Vocaster 1, which is simply one little box on my table 
Big knobs. And, I love the big knobs. And it's what you wanted. It's not like I like Mark better, so I gave him the two. You you both requested the ones that you got. Yeah. I try to keep... I, I don't want to say I'm a minimalist, but I, I try not to like chalk up my whole room with a bunch of stuff I'm not going to use. Yeah, I get well, that. Well, agreed, and that's why I'm glad to kind of go to the Vocaster 2 from the uh, 2i tube, because everything is in the front. Uh, and I know we're harkening back to earlier in the in this video, but uh, and now I really appreciate the ergonomics even more. Granted, it's only been sitting out on my desk for about an hour or so. I, I just got this recently. But now I realize how hard it was to adjust things in the in the Scarlet, where yeah. the ergonomics, this is kind of facing me. So I'm, I'm really yeah. liking that. I'm going to put this, I think, right underneath my monitor so that I can easily see if it's muted or, or or what have you you know i know you said you're going through a studio remodel and clearly i am as well since i'm going to box everything up and take it with me uh buying a new desk buying new furniture everything is happening uh with this move so uh, you know be ready uh hopefully i'll have a really cool studio when i get to the other side of this standing desk standing I am, desk 100 yeah, percent. Yep. adjustable standing desk changes yep. your life yep with presets i love those presets yep, yep. i've got We're, four i love yep. it i'm on it and studio monitors, and hopefully an interface that will not just drive your microphone, but also drive your studio monitors. Hmm. Yep, I've got some studio monitors here. Yeah. All right, this doesn't work. I'm trying to show you that my my desk <laughs> raises and lowers, but my my camera's mounted off of my desk. Oh, so yeah. <laughs> The camera doesn't I was, move. I, I could hear it. I could hear the motor going, but I thought your chair was just lowering. <laughs> is all that looked like. <laughs> yeah, I guess I didn't uh, plan that out very well. All right. So, uh, we appreciate you, Dan. We appreciate Focusrite for sponsoring the Podcast Services Mastermind Workshop. Please go to podcastersconference.com and you will find all the information on how to register RSVP. We actually have a scholarship, too. Oh, nice. We are. Oh, that's great. It's thanks to you guys. The sponsors have taken care of pretty much everything we needed to, so we're able to offer some uh, scholarships to a few number of people. Uh, Thank you. To, uh, we should have the URL up there, don't we? Thank we you. Should. Yeah, uh, Steve, why don't you type that? Why? Uh, in fact, Dan, you didn't know about this. Uh, I think I've only told one of the four sponsors, but thanks to uh, to Focusrite and the other supporting companies, we were able to offer a scholarship. So there you go. If you head over to Podcast Editor Academy dot com slash scholarship uh yeah we're, we luckily to folks uh companies like you your support you know we've got a couple slots where we can offer people a a free ticket uh for those of you that would like to have a very intensive collaborative mastermind for an entire day for 199 you know head on over to podcast editor conference and uh, the podcast services mastermind workshop uh, to get that ticket or if you want to save 200 bucks, apply for the scholarship. But leave the scholarship for someone that needs it. If you got 200 bucks, spend the 200 bucks. Yeah, if you yeah. can. Yeah. And David I mean, well, says he wants to be there, so we should just have him buy a ticket. Uh, ooh, yes. pick me, pick me. There you go. <laughs> yeah, and that scholarship is only going to be open for, I think, six more days. Yeah. And uh, we, will, we will get back to everybody uh, to let you know as quickly as possible whether uh, you made it into the scholarship or, or not. Uh, so, but definitely, it's not something you want to wait on. I think the form, now granted, we put it together, but I kept taking questions out. Honestly, I think it only takes about five minutes to fill out to, to apply for the scholarship. So if it's something uh, that you are interested in, I definitely think you should make it to the Podcast Services Mastermind Workshop. Of course, mm -hmm. I'm biased. <laughs> but yeah. if you can get to Dallas on the 23rd, this is definitely the event uh, to be at for uh, for the year. And then you've got, you know, Podcast Movement. Uh, granted, that's a separate ticket through Podcast Movement, but you got the entire Podcast Movement for the rest of the week. Yeah. yeah. Lots building of fun. On, building on the experiences you develop from our workshop. Yep. Yes, exactly. Asking yeah. great questions based on what they learn. Calling people out. I'll be grilling everybody after we're done throughout the weekend. Will. I'll be like, pop <laughs> quiz. Well, it's funny because we, we're going to show people how to develop a one page map of their overall business concept idea or their current operations or, or how they need to get to the next level. I'm sorry, this is not my microphone. I don't like it sitting there. And you'll be able to see where your deficiencies are at and you should be able to shore those up uh, through cool. some of the other learning and networking at, uh, at Podcast Moments. So, yeah, it's going to nice. be a great week for anyone that can make it. Can't wait. Yep. And there might be two Dallases there. Oh. I can't say any more than that. I don't know. We might have another Dallas and Dallas. We'll see. Nobody hmm. knows what I'm talking about. I might. It's a secret. Nope. We'll see. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> All right. I better shut it down here before I say more. 
Well, thank <laughs> you all for Joe. watching, Dave and David, for sure, for chiming in for us. Mark, thanks for co-hosting it. Dan yep. Hewley from soon to be Billings, Montana area. Yeah. Uh, but but the uh, what was your official title at Focus right now? Vice uh, President. <laughs> <laughs> no, I am janitor of uh, services okay. and things. No, I am the senior marketing manager for Focusrite in the U.S. Senior marketing manager in the U.S. because you guys are global. And senior just because I'm kind of old. <laughs> More dad jokes. All right. Thanks. Thank everybody for joining us. We'll see you on Thursday for another live stream. Thanks for having me, guys. Thanks for everybody. Thank you, Dan. Thank you, Dan. Thank you, Focusrite.